exactly six years ago today, on May 27, 2016, Ms. Heard walked into court and filed a false report of domestic abuse against her husband of 15 months, Johnny Depp. The scene was a setup. She tipped off the paparazzi so they would be waiting. They knew exactly where she would pause, which side of her face to photograph. And the photos captured what she wanted them to see, the image of a battered woman. What the paparazzi did not know is that the dark mark on her face mysteriously appeared six days after last seeing Mr. Depp. It was a lie. She knew it. Mr. Depp knew it. And the multiple witnesses you heard from who saw her that week of May 21st, 2016, also knew it. But the world only saw what she wanted them to see. Hello, it's Doug from Behind Closed Doors, and today I'm going to be talking about the Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp defamation trial. When Amber Heard defecated all over Johnny Depp's reputation. There's so much to say about this. The first thing I'd like to say is that I set up my channel based on this principle. This channel is called Behind Closed Doors. And one of the reasons why it's called Behind Closed Doors is because that's the excuse everybody uses when fake victims come forward and have no evidence. They just revert to, well, you don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Camille and Amber even mentioned behind closed doors in the trial. I've heard a lot of people say a lot of things to be involved in the Johnny Depp show, but he wasn't there. He doesn't know. And he certainly doesn't know what happened behind closed doors, like most people. So you're calling Mr. Knight a liar? I am saying he wasn't there. And what he testified to doesn't match what I know happened. But I don't fault him. He wasn't there, so how would he know? He testified he was there, Ms. Heard. Did you hear that? That's his testimony, yes. So you're calling him a liar? I'm just saying he wasn't there. But what was happening behind closed doors was quite different from what Ms. Heard presented to the world. The exact opposite, in fact. The man you beat up numerous times. <laughs> right, Ms. Heard? I could never hurt Johnny, and I swung at him. I hadn't landed a blow, and I hit him. Like, actually hit him. Square in the face. I could never hurt Johnny. 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 And the man you beat up numerous times. <laughs> right, Miss Heard? I could never hurt Johnny. You got hit. I'm sorry I hit you like this. But I did not punch you. I did not fucking deck you. I fucking was hitting you. I don't know what the motion of my actual hand was. You're here in this courtroom because Mr. Depp finally told the world that he is a victim of domestic violence. I, I'm not sitting here bitching about it, am I? You are. That's the difference between me and you. You're a fucking baby. You didn't think he would tell the world he was a victim of domestic violence, did you? You are such a baby! Grow the fuck up, did you start Johnny! physical fights? I did start a physical fight. Yeah, you did, so I had to get the fuck out of there. Yes, you did. So you did the right thing, the big thing. The, you know what? You are admirable. And when you really do look behind closed doors, it can sometimes be the exact opposite of what everyone else is portraying, as is the case with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Amber Heard was going around claiming to be a victim of domestic abuse, when really she was the one instigating domestic abuse, and Johnny Depp was trying to get away from it. The evidence presented at this trial has shown that Ms. Heard is in fact the abuser and Mr. Depp the abused. As you heard from Mr. Depp and multiple other witnesses that testified under oath, Mr. Depp experienced persistent verbal, physical, and emotional abuse by Ms. Heard during their relationship. And when their relationship was over, Ms. Heard inflicted the greatest and cruelest injury of all. She publicly and falsely named Mr. Depp as the abuser. Ms. Heard never thought she would be held accountable. She never thought that Mr. Depp would tell you, the jury, and the world that he was the real victim of domestic abuse. What did you say in response when Ms. Heard said, tell the world, Johnny, I, Johnny Depp, a man, I'm a victim to of domestic violence? I said, yes, I am. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Right. So what's happened in this Johnny Depp trial is what's happened to thousands of people usually men, usually fathers, in family court all throughout the Western world. The second point I'd like to make is that I side with Johnny Depp. I'm justice for Johnny all the way. And Amber Heard is a complete dickhead. 
and she is a criminal and she should be tried for her crimes. I don't support Amber Heard in any way with what she's done. But at the same time, I will say that Amber Heard is not the problem. The problem is the fact that ex parte non-molestation and restraining orders exist. You can get Amber Heard-ed. What Amber Heard did to Johnny Depp, there's probably somebody in your life that can do it to you. And don't think that just because you're female that you can be exempt from it, or just because you're a mother you can be exempt from it. So Amber Heard isn't the problem. The problem is that you can get orders from the court based on no evidence and based on hearsay. And the whole idea of the justice system is that you're innocent until proven guilty. But in family court cases and civil cases, the opposite is true. You're guilty until proven innocent. In family court, it's called the silver bullet. You win before the game's even begun. And this was after you had publicly accused him of domestic violence. I got my restraining order before that, yes. Mm -hmm. And this is after you had obtained the domestic violence restraining order against him. That's correct. The reason why ex parte non-molestation or restraining orders are coercive controlling behaviour, which is a criminal act, is because they're coerced, which means you're doing it behind somebody else's back. That's the ex parte part of it. And it's controlling, which means basically you're getting an order to be a victim in a relationship. And being a victim in a relationship gives you power. Fake victims are very dangerous people. And Amber Herb will swear blind that she's not a victim while she identifies as a victim. As a noble victim of domestic violence. I have you? never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Nor have you? I ever called myself one. Trying to stand up for myself and Johnny would, I thought he would just throw me, shove me, hit me in the face. I mean, it was just like, all I could do is just try to, <laughs> try to fight back or try to, not get more hurt. Uh, I don't really recall um, specifics. So I have you never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. So I have you never, never wanted to be seen as a victim. Uh, I don't really recall um, specifics. So you had a broken nose, right? That's absolutely what I thought. And you told the story that you had two black eyes after this incident, right? I did have two black eyes after that incident. And you testified that you also had a busted lip from when Mr. Depp punched you. That is uh, correct. From December, yes, that's correct. You testified that the lip wound kept reopening when you moved your mouth. That's correct. You also testified that you had bruising on your temple. That's correct. And bruising on your chin. Correct. You also testified that your head was bleeding from where Mr. Depp ripped chunks of your hair out. I remember, yes. And that you had, quote, gross pussy, and quote, bruising around your temple. Uh, in my scalp, yeah. And she'll tell you that she'd never hurt Johnny Depp. Well, she hurts Johnny Depp. The man you beat up numerous times. <laughs> right, Ms. Heard? I could never hurt Johnny, and I swung at him. I hadn't landed a blow, and I hit him. And she's a person that can't be trusted. The third point I'd like to make is that what's happening in these courts is the destruction of the family home. And the reason why they're destroying the family home, and essentially creating a private civil war amongst the family, is because it's very good for the economy. The cost of the family breakdown is worth billions. Lots of people, many industries, make loads of money out of breaking up the family. So it's not going to stop any time in the near future because it's just too profitable. The Western world is mostly now a service-based economy. And a huge amount of people depend on the breakdown of the family home. And for that reason, there's going to continue to be a civil war which is going to decimate the families that make up a country. So there are just three points I'd like to make in this video. But I have so much more to say on this because this is the reason why I started this channel. Because the system is set up to create conflict amongst families which enables faked victims to get court orders in order to be able to tell another person what to say, do, think and act. If this was in a family court and they had children together, Johnny Depp wouldn't see his children. There'd be parental alienation through and through. That's the type of person that Amber Heard is. That's the nature of a character. That's the nature of the beast that you're dealing with. Amber Heard is a classic Karen and she would take the kids. 
Karen Heard, maybe. Johnny Depp is just lucky that he didn't have children with Amber Heard because she would have got them in the family court, despite all this defamation stuff, even though she can't be trusted with children. There's this old saying about, you know, girls being made of um, sugar and spice and all things nice and, and boys being made of like puppy dog tails and stuff like that. Women are great, men are shit. That's the ethos of the poem. And that's the programming that this feminism has installed in the Western world in the past 40, 50 years. And it's a load of bullshit because women can be just as dangerous, violent, abusive and obnoxious as men can. Every individual is different and you shouldn't believe all women in the same way that you shouldn't believe all men. And I believe that this case is going to be the turning point because so many people are talking about it. And this is something that everyone has known for years, but nothing's been in the spotlight enough until now. Not only have I made this channel to draw attention to what goes on behind closed doors, I've also attempted on this channel and will continue to demonstrate what the solutions are to these problems. How do you get into a healthy relationship? How do you trust yourself after you've been in an unhealthy relationship? How do you screen and test to make sure that the person that you're dating isn't going to abuse you or turn around and be a fake victim and accuse you of abuse? The whole system is set up so that anyone can be a victim now for any reason. And you have to get in relationships with people that you trust. And the only way to trust somebody is if they're honest with you. So if you get into relationships with people that are dishonest or disrespectful, you're not going to be able to trust that you're in a safe, secure, loving relationship. I believe in the family home. I believe in the individual. And I want to see there be a change now. And I'm going to keep pushing for that change. And a lot of it is common sense, but we've lost common sense. What happened to Johnny Depp happened to me, but a lot worse because there were children involved and there was child torture involved. And it happened around the same time in 2016. And we're in 2022 now. And Johnny Depp is only just getting to clear his name and he's rich and famous the average man doesn't stand a chance you need a lot of time resources money and public trust to be able to see this through can you please tell the jury why you're here today the responsibility of clearing the record the only way that i get to the point where i could speak has really taken this full six years and it's been six years of trying times. I didn't uh, deserve that, nor did my children, nor did the people who have believed in me for all these years. I, I didn't want anybody to believe that I had done them wrong or lied to them or that I was a fraud. There are thousands of innocent men and women, fathers and mothers out there. And a lot of them are penalized by not being able to see their children because of the malicious lies of their ex-partner. Despite everything that he's gone through, Johnny Depp was never prevented from seeing his children. He doesn't know what that feels like, and it's like a living bereavement, on top of all the other malicious things your ex-partner is doing. And his children weren't harmed physically by his abusive ex. What happened with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard is a tip of the iceberg, and it can happen to anyone, anytime, who's in a relationship with somebody. They can lie to a court, get court orders, and destroy you and your children's life and the rest of your family. And it needs to stop. We need to put an end to the criminal child abusing courts that hand out these orders to perpetrators. The court has authority and there needs to be responsibility associated with that authority. We need to have accountability. And at the moment, the courts aren't accountable for what they do behind closed doors. Amber Heard is a dickhead and what she did was malicious, evil and wrong, but she shouldn't have been allowed to do it. And any other woman that's just the same could do the same to Johnny Depp next year and do the same to you, whether you're a man or a woman. Depending on where you live, if you live in the Western world, your life can be destroyed, decimated by the false allegations of somebody else based on no evidence whatsoever. And they can have power and control over your life, which is a criminal offence. They're criminals and they can be allowed to get away with doing it. And it will take years. It took Johnny Depp six years to prove that they're wrong and that they shouldn't have been doing it. Justice for Johnny, but also justice for all the falsely accused respondents in family court.